federal lands when he was a candidate. Do, does the administration still have that commitment today to, to we end do, that and, and, and the, um, uh, the leases will be uh, reviewed by our team. That is White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki confirming Wednesday night that President Biden will in fact ban fracking on federal land. Well, that raised a few eyebrows with many, especially since Biden spent much of the campaign saying things like this. No more, no new fracking. We, we are, we are going to get rid of fossil fuels. Well, like what about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yeah. pipe? Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in the Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel, and I am not going to clock it. But the thing is, he said no, he wouldn't ban fracking when asked several times during the debates, during campaigning. There was a back and forth, but apparently he was telling the truth in the early days. Uh, senator Doug Mastriano is a Pennsylvania state senator, uh, and it's going to have a big impact on his state. That's why we bring him in. Senator, good to see you. Thank you so much for your time. My question is, were you surprised the Biden administration is looking to ban fracking on federal lands? It, sadly, no. And, and you know what? I'm tired of politics and politicians. He says one thing, says another thing in the debates, and of course the moderators uh, back up Biden, and we see the truth comes out. And in the end, this is going to be catastrophic for Pennsylvania. 600,000 jobs, billions of dollars are lost. 35% of our energy is produced uh, by the natural gas industry. But more importantly, 30 years ago, this month, me and about 600,000 other Americans were uh, in Saudi Arabia preparing to go into uh, Kuwait and Iraq to liberate Kuwait, and that was all about securing access to oil. And it's very liberating that America, finally, under Trump, has become energy independent. And so that we can go back to relying upon Russian or, or other countries' oil and gas is ridiculous and it's a threat to our country and to the lives of our men and women. What do you tell these union workers there, some 600,000? What do you tell them? How do they find another job during a pandemic? Because that would indeed, that's a reality. Yeah, it is. And, and it's close and personal. I mean, obviously, I have friends in the industry here that work and uh, got to meet a few of them before the industry got fired back up only a couple of years ago, thanks to Donald Trump. And uh, this affects people's lives. I mean, it, it results in, in despair, desperation, you know, homelessness. It, it's a fact. And th these are real jobs here. And I, I just spoke about Pennsylvania, but nationwide here, this will be a loss of about uh, 19 million jobs uh, in the end and about $7 trillion from our budget. There's nothing good about this here. If we want to move away from that industry, which I think is ill-advised and stupid, it needs to be more deliberate than just suddenly, okay, XL pipeline, your Keystone pipeline, you're done. A fracking in Pennsylvania, we're going to review the leases, and it's going to slowly strangle our people. In the end, it's the average people in Pennsylvania and the United States that suffer, and it's the average union job, the hardworking men and women out there. So this, this whole idea that the Democrat Party is about the small people, that's a fallacy from the past. It's not true. Just to be fair, uh, I want to get, because you would know this better than me, th they're going to stop this uh, oil and gas leasing on federal land. Is yep. that helpful because it's not on public land? Can you differentiate the two for us of how that would affect Pennsylvania? Yeah, so obviously that does limit the scope. So private land, that's a separate issue. And state land, obviously that's up to our governor. Governor Wolf is also a very anti-fracking and anti-job from the energy sector here. So that does give us some hope, but that's still quite a bit of the energy sector because in the end it undermines the entire sector and it has a huge impact on the industry as a whole. Like I said, one third of our, of our energy resources in my state alone come from uh, the fracking industry. If you think about this in light of what happened a couple of years ago, we had a really bad winter a few years ago. And of course, Massachusetts leans very left, very Democrat. And uh, they were so ardent against buying Pennsylvania produced gas that when they are in an energy crisis in that awful winter, they bought it off of Russia instead. That's how ridiculous this gets. All right, I've got to switch gears because I, I really want to get your comments on this, this next topic uh, before I let you off the hook here. Uh, President Biden selected Rachel Levine uh, as the Assistant Secretary of Health. Uh, this is being called historic in mainstream media because she or he is transgender. However, this story is making headlines because when she headed up the COVID fight in your state, sir, it was an unmitigated disaster. She took a lot of heat for pulling her mom out of an elderly living facility while nursing homes were forced to take in those COVID patients on her orders. What are your thoughts on this, Pick? You could not find a more ill-equipped and failed person to fill this person uh, fill that position at the national level. I called for Levine's resignation back in May after seeing the catastrophe that Levine unleashed. You know, 
I, I don't, you know, in the end, if, who somebody is doesn't matter, but can they do the job right? And Levine has proven to be a failure and incompetent. So Levine issued guidance on 18 March last year to, to direct hospitals to send COVID positive patients, sick COVID patients back into the most vulnerable, into nursing homes and long-term healthcare facilities. That's resulted at times up to 70% of our state's death. We, we, we have so many problems in Pennsylvania because of Levine's incompetence. And as you rightly said, Levine saw that was a failed policy. And instead of coming out like a decent human being and saying, hey, Pennsylvania, we have a problem. Get your loved ones out of those homes if you can. But instead of being an honest person, snuck Levine's own mommy out and put mom into a suite down the road where Levine can see mom anytime Levine wants to. But meanwhile, the rest of Pennsylvania's family members are watching their elderly loved ones or parents die alone in despair. You, you could not find a worse person to pick this position. You know, I, I can't believe we're in a time in, in America where we're going to pick somebody based off an ideology rather than their confidence. We, I could care less who they are as a person as long as they get the job done and do it well. Levine's proven to be a failure, and it's a terrible thing that the United States is now going to suffer from the same problems we've had in Pennsylvania. Because like I said, over almost up to 60 percent of deaths now are a result of Levine's failed policies. This, this Levine has done nothing good for Pennsylvania as far as the COVID. Pennsylvania State Senator Doug Mastriano, good to see you. Thanks so much for sharing your thoughts. We appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Thank you, sir. God bless you.